Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is your general science teacher, Sadia Jansi. Welcome to the lesson number two of chapter number one, Cells, Tissues and Organs. In the previous lesson, we have discussed about cells, its definition, its features and structures of plant and animal cell. Now, in this lesson, we will discuss about the specialist plant cells. So, let's get started specialist plant cells first we are going to discuss is palisade cells now palisade cells its structure is given in the diagram you can see this is a structure of palisade cells in which you can see the cell wall a nucleus a chloroplast and a vacuole now where does it found it founds on the in the top surface of the leaves and it contains a lot of extra chloroplast to trap sunlight and it carry out photosynthesis Actually, the palisade cells contain a lot of extra chloroplasts, which helps in the trapping of sunlight. And when the plants trap sunlight, it helps them in the synthesis of their food. As you know that chloroplast is a green color pigment, as I have mentioned uh, earlier. So the green pigment helps in the synthesis of the food uh, by the process of photosynthesis. Now next is root hair cells. Now root hair cell structure is also given over here. You can see that here it is a nucleus. Here uh, water in the minerals enters. So these are basically these structures which you can see I'm highlighting in. These are root hair cells. These are the cells and these are hairs. So they are uh, meant for the extraction of water and minerals from the soil. They do not have chloroplast. Why? Because the roots function is to ex extract minerals and water. It doesn't uh, have a function of making food, but it helps in the extraction of water and minerals from the soil. Its function is to take out water and mineral source from the soil, as I have told you earlier. Uh, they are long and thin to provide large surface area. As you can see the uh, structure of the root here, these are long and thin, which provide large surface area. So these are two specialist uh, plant cells. Now we are going to talk about specialist animal cells. Now the specialized cells in animals and special function and their diagram which is everything is given on the screen. So you can clearly see and if you want to um, read it out uh, by your own self from the book you can also find it on the page number 4. So first is red blood cells which is also known as RBCs. They contain hemoglobin which carries oxygen around the body. Now if any of you or maybe anyone can ask a question from you that why do we see a blood in red color? It is because of a chemical which is known as hemoglobin. Similarly in plants if anyone can ask you a question someone ask you a question like why do we see plants green it is because of a green pigment which is known as a chloroplast as i've told you chloroplast is a green color pigment so because of the chloroplast we see plants green and uh, because of the hemoglobin hemoglobin we see uh, blood in red color so the blood uh, red blood cells which are also known as rbcs they contain hemoglobin means red color pigment which carries oxygen now it carries oxygen around the body the the function of the red blood cells is to carry oxygen okay the next specialized cells in animals is nerve cells the structure is also given over here now what's the function they have connections at both ends they have connections you can see the connections at both and which carry messages around the body now these things carry messages around the body now a third is ciliated epithelial cells ciliated means cilia it comes from a word cilia cilia means small or you can say that tiny hair these tiny hairs are also present in your throat inside of your throat not the outside and in your nose as well in nose these are known uh, known as nose hair or you can also call as cilia and in throat um, tiny hair are also present which are known as cilia so the function of cilia is to sweep out the dust and microbes 
tiny hair called cilia present on the surface to seep out the dust and the microbes. You can see these structures. This is known as cilia. These tiny hair-like structures are known as cilia. So, if you commonly see that your nose mein jo hair present hote hain, unka bhi yehi kam hota hai ki bahar se aane wali dust ko ya microbes ko wo trap kar lete hain. So, this is the ciliated epithelial cells. This is a tiny hair like structure and it is a calm that it is sweeping the dust and microbes. So, it will be in the body of your body and you will not be able to do it. Next, we are going to discuss is unicellular organisms. So, uni. Uni means one. Unicellular organisms are those organisms which are made up of single cell, means which are made up of uh, one cell. Now the examples of unicellular organisms are amoeba, cholera and few microbes and some simple plants and animals. The diagrams of the amoeba and the cholera both are given over here so you can easily see how the amoeba looks like and how the cholera looks like. Next is multicellular organism. Here the multi means many. Multi means many and uni means singular. So multicellular organism means those organisms which are made up of many cells or you can say that which are made up of two or more than two cells. So the examples are human beings and higher animals and plants. A uh, few uh, things which I'm going to discuss over here which is really important to be noted. One is, that is in larger cells in the body is egg cell or ova cells which measures about 0.2 millimeter and the smaller cells in the body which is brain cells and it measures about 0.005 millimeter it can also comes in your mcq so you should mark it down in on your books page number five you will find over there so next topic is about tissues and so basically what are tissues? Tissues are actually a group of similar cells. When a group of similar cells join, they form tissues. Now we will talk about the examples of tissues in plants. Number one is epidermal tissue, then photosynthetic tissue and supporting tissue. Now what are epidermal tissue? First, we will discuss about their occurrence, their composition and their function. Composition means from which they are made up of. Epidermal tissue. They are found on the surface of leaves. As you have seen the leaf, it has two surfaces. So, epidermal tissues are found on the upper surface and on the lower surface. So, in the diagram, you can see the upper epidermis and a lower epidermis. This one side is the uh, upper side of the leaf and this side is the lower side of the leaf. Now, composition. They are made up of sheets of flattened cells. If you see the diagram clearly, they are actually a layer of flattened cells. Over here, you can see cells which are flat. Now function, what is the function of epidermal tissue? They protect the plant from damaging. They are the actually outer layers of the uh, leaf. So their function must be about the protection. Number second is photosynthetic tissue. It comes from the word photosynthesis. So you should remember photosynthetic tissue function must be to make food for the plants. Now where they are found? They are found on the green parts of a plant. You can see this area, this whole area and this one as well is green. Now this area is actually a photosynthetic tissue. It's a parasite mesophyll and spongy mesophyll. Now they are divided into uh, the photosynthetic tissue divided into palisade mesophyll cells and spongy mesophyll cells. Their function is to make food for the plants. They, are, uh, are, they have some other function as well but here we are um, considering it collectively. Now the third one is supporting tissue. It comes from a word support. Support means when you give someone support. So they are basically found in the plant stem and they are made up of cells with thick walls. Because they are supporting the plant, so obviously they are made up of thick walls. And the function is to support and give strength to the plant. If you see a plant standing erect, it is because of a supporting tissue. Because the supporting tissue makes the plant to stand erect. In uh, taller trees, 
they are standing straight because of the supporting tissue these were the examples of um, tissues in plants now we will discuss about the examples of tissues in animals number one we will discuss epithelial tissue then muscle tissue and then nerve tissue similarly here we will also discuss about their occurrence their composition and their function so first one is epithelial tissue they are found on the surface of animal skin in plants the upper layer was epidermis the epidermal tissue and in animals the upper layer is epithelial tissue now in the diagram you can see over here this is epidermis this is epidermis in animal or you can say that in human beings as well so they are basically found on the surface of animal skin now composition they are made up of sheets of cells let's go in the diagram here you can see a sheet of cells this whole is a layer of sheets of cells and what is their function their function is also similar like the epidermis tissue in the plants they also protect the structure underneath now the second one is muscle tissue found in limbs arms and legs are collectively known as limbs they are made up of muscle cells and their function is to contract and move the body organ so it means our uh, arms and legs movements are because of the muscle tissue the third one is nerve tissue they are found in brain and spinal cord they are made up of network of nerve cells and their function is to conduct messages inside the body our body brings or you can say that send the message because of the nerve tissue to the brain so this was all about uh, tissues in plants and animals i hope you get each and every point of it thank you for watching stay home stay safe allah hafiz